In this lesson, we will be talking about the variance component estimates by re-talking about the expected mean squares and deriving them using the car mileage example. To get started, let's just recap the statistical model that we talked about in our last lesson. Our statistical, our statistical model for subsampling under the CRD case was here, where again, we took the CRD model without sub sampling, our yij equal to mu plus alpha i plus epsilon ij, where in this case our epsilon ij was a normal zero sigma squared epsilon. Okay, so this was our CRD that we learned about in lesson two, where we had no subsampling. With subsampling, we took this error term and we broke it up into our experimental unit error and our observational unit error. In the past, when we were just working with the CRD, when we wanted and we when we wanted to estimate this value, so sigma hat squared epsilon, we would simply just look at the MSE of the ANOVA table. Okay. But now our MSE is broken up into our MSEE. So in this case of subsampling, MSE is now broken up into MSEE -E and MSOE with subsampling. And unfortunately, it's not as easy as saying the estimate for sigma epsilon is equal to MSEE -E and the estimate of sigma eta is MSOE. We need to be a little bit careful in our estimation and how do we calculate it. So to help us understand this, we're gonna go back and look at, the, at our uh, expected mean squares. So again, the expected mean squares tells us what we expect on average if we were to repeat this experiment over and over and over. We're not repeating the analysis. We're actually going out, recollecting data, and reperforming the analysis. Because if we just had the data and we kept rerunning the analysis on the same data, you should be getting the same answer. So we're going back out and we're repeating the experiment and we're doing the analysis. And so the MSEE is a random variable that we would expect if we were to repeat over and over and over to be a piece of the observational error and a piece of the exper experimental error. Where again, S represents our sub samples, our number, be a little bit specific, okay? So we're gonna use these two formulas here and here to help us derive for estimates for sigma hat squared epsilon and sigma hat squared eta, okay? So let's look at this. We know that the expected value of MSE -E is equal to sigma squared eta S sigma squared epsilon. We know expected OE sigma squared epsilon. Okay, so what this means is if we had an estimate for sigma squared eta, which we're going to denote as sigma hat squared eta, this is our estimate, then we just drop the expected value here and we say our best estimate for the observational error is the MSOE. So this one is simple. So on average, we would expect the MSOE to be sigma squared eta. To estimate it, our best guess would be MSOE, okay? But now what about sigma hat squared epsilon? What would this be? It isn't as simple as just saying MSEE. -E. What we have to do requires a little bit more algebra. And so hopefully you guys would agree that if I wrote MS 
E E is equal to the expected value M S O E plus S sigma squared epsilon. Hopefully you guys agree with me there. And all you see is I'm substituting this value into here. So now after we can do some quick algebra and we can see that our expected M S E E minus the expected value of M S O E divided by S is sigma squared epsilon. Now, if we drop our expected values, then we can see that the est our best estimate for sigma squared hat epsilon would be M S E E minus M S O E divided by our number of subsamples. And thus we have a variance estimate for experimental error. With that all in place, let's now go to our car example. Okay, missing. All right, my printer did something weird, but that's okay. So again, our car example, we had five brands, we had three subsamples, and we did this analysis last time. Now our question is we want to be able to estimate our sigma epsilon and our sigma for our sigma squared for our eta. And how we do this, this is provided in jump for my jump users, but let's just ignore this real quick. So in order to get our sigma hat squared for our eta, we just look at our MSOE. So we go up here to our observational error. We go over to our MS or our mean expected, and we have it right there. So this is sigma squared eta hat. Now for our MSEE, we have to be a little bit more careful. And so we have to take our MSEE Subtract, that should be a minus sign, our MSOE, and then divide by three. This three is because we had three subsamples and we can get a 0.388. My R users, you're gonna have to do this calculation when I ask for it. My jump users, you will actually be get this variance component estimate here. And they do a little bit of breakdown of the total variability. Um, so here's your sigma hat squared epsilon, and here's your sigma squared eta. So boom. Again, this is the advantage of doing subsampling. We are now able to estimate the experimental unit variability and the observational unit variability. And this is, could be a reason why you want to do a subsampling design. Um, because you can estimate these two variabilities. In our next lecture, I'm going to be focused on talking about the difference between doing the analysis of subsampling versus just averaging.